Shut the hell up, Elvis. I love you too. We'll talk later. Right then. I, as he said, am Moon the Pirate. And this is not my real voice. Yay! No, I am. I am Moon the Lesbian Pirate. And I would just like to take a second for the camera's autofocus to adjust to the amount of rainbow on stage right now. You're welcome. Uh, but yes, tonight I'm going to talk about something near and dear to the heart of every pirate, as well as most lesbians, drinking. Yeah. Oh yes, drinking. And I'm not talking about just knocking back a couple of those classy boxes of wine with your sorority sisters while doing your toenails and watching reruns of Sex in the City. No. No. I'm talking about passed out drunk on your frat brother's couch trying to find the deeper meaning in dubstep. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm talking, you're passed out and you're here, and you're sitting there going, yes, sir. You were drunk. You were drunk and you need to put the bottle down. Also, I totally just beatbox dubstep. Talent. Thank you. But you see, I have a reason to drink. I am the only lesbian in like a 50 mile radius of my small town that I live in. True story. I'm talking, I see, I so much as catch a glimpse of another homosexual, and I get more excited than Clay Aiken on a date with Adam Lambert at a share concert. I am serious. I am just like, Of course, that's inwardly. I'm more butch than that, so outwardly it's more like, so. As you do. But you see, I have a theory that you cannot officially say that you have been drunk till you have called a cop a pussy to his face. This is not a personal challenge, people. The only reason I got away with this is because he was drunker than I was. All right? Don't try that shit at home. Okay? But, you know, it's fun. See, what you have to understand is in my town, my parents are very popular. And in order to tell you how I became this drunk, I have to tell you about my parents. You see, my father is a volunteer fire chief and my mother is the city secretary. So, needless to say, when we go out to eat dinner, it is like a whole family of norms just walked into cheers. It is to, woo, you know, they see my mom, yay, they see my dad, there's old Bubba. That's my dad's nickname, I'm not making that up. I don't write my own material, I just tell you people shit that's happened to me, okay? So, you know, there's my dad, there's old Bubba, you know, and he's always like, oh, there's old catfish, and then he bows up for no reason, just, you know, I don't know why, just, or, so every time, no matter who it is, there's old catfish, there's old catfish. So one time I'm like, hey, dad, who's that? And he's like, I have no idea. <laughs> so, you know, that's my folks. So for my 21st birthday, they took me to a small country bar filled with approximately 126 of their closest friends. Now, obviously everybody came by. Oh, what's your daughter's 21st birthday? Let me buy her a drink. Let me buy her a shot. Let me buy her a beer, you know. I remember the first hour, hour and a half, a little bit. See, I was fine until they introduced me to a drink called the Three Wise Men. Yeah, some of you know what the hell that is. I did not, okay? Huh, good for you, and I am sorry. Now, for those of you who don't know, it is Jim Beam, Johnny Walker, and Jack Daniels. All at once, all for you. Now, you may be asking, why would they name a drink after biblical figures? Well, I will tell you why. I shall tell you because I have figured it out. You see, just as the three wise men in the Bible trekked across the desert to see their newly born Lord and Savior stopping along the way at a 24-hour convenience store to buy shitty last-minute gifts, so too does the three wise men drink the next day, deliver headache, nausea, and more bathroom trips than anyone can handle in one period time. Who I tell you. Okay, so I was fine. You know, they're telling me, oh, they're going to start talking to you. Then three wise men start whispering in your ear. And I'm like, no, I'm cool. It's my first trip to the bar legally. I'm fine. I got this. The next thing I know, I am in my bedroom floor, curled up in a fetal position, hugging my trash can like it is my long lost puppy. My mother is standing over me disapprovingly going, now, what did I tell you about puking in the house? Now... I composed myself for a moment, for 
A brief time, I stop my sob vomiting, and I lift my head up, and I'm not making this up. I look at her and I say, Mother, I regret to inform you I have had an argument with the three wise men. And she says, Really? How'd that go for you? I said, They have won. Now, I talk a lot about my parents. Now, I may not always get along with them, and sometimes my chosen family understands me more than they do, but I love them. I could not ask for better parents. I kind of literally owe them my life, you know? So, you know, they're, they're really good people. And my father, who is deceptively intelligent for a man whose nickname is Bubba, I'm not kidding, he's recently celebrated his birthday on New Year's Eve. So if I could just get a happy birthday, Bubba, that would make me so happy. Just... Oh, thank you. I thank you and my father will thank you if he ever discovers the internet. But he's a smart guy. And you see, a few months ago, I got on this weird universe kick where I'm you know, watching all these documentaries about stars and, and the birth of stars and the meaning behind it all and, and why are we here. And I'm calling up my girlfriend every night and just countless hours of conversations and, and debate and speculation. So one night, my father is having his evening smoke on our quiet, dark, country front porch, as he does. And I'm like, Father, why? Why are we here? What is the meaning? What's the reason behind it all? And he says, you know, I used to ask myself those same questions until I went to Alaska. And I climbed a mountain. And I was so high up, and I looked down, and I could see eagles soaring below me. And I get to the top of the mountain, and the splendor, and I look around, and you know what I saw? And I said, what's that, Dad? He said, more mountains. And it's the most simple answer to the most complex question. We don't climb the mountain because it's there. We climb it because we are. And you see, the thing about it is, no matter who you are, no matter how tall your mountain is, at the end of the day, whether it be your friends or family, your sorority sister or your frat brother, there is always, always going to be somebody to kick back and have a drink with. Now, they say, always leave them wanting more, but I agree with that, but I, I agree more with always leave them thinking. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go on to the next performer. But I would like to say, if I've made you laugh tonight, if I made you think, if I made you question your sexuality, ladies, you can find me on Facebook, The Book of Faces, at Moon the Pirate. And just remember, always drink. Always. So on that note, good night. Thanks for listening, mates. Yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of rum. Drink up, me hotties, yo-ho.